I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Brian King, Vice President of Corporate Development and IR at Caliber Mining. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks very much for having me. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. We're down at the Denver Gold Show. Uh, there seems to be a bit of exuberance around the gold price, uh, investment into new gold companies, and uh, Caliber's happy to be here and talk about our new exciting transformational acquisition with B2 Gold to acquire two producing gold mines. Please tell me the details of that transaction. What can you tell us about how that came about? Yeah, I can. Caliber Mining has been exploring in Nicaragua for the last 10 years. Uh, over the last 10 years, we've made discoveries, we've expanded resources. So we have over 2.4 million ounces of gold in infer inferred resources in the country, up in the northern part of the country in the Barossi concessions. One of our concessions has a joint venture with IM Gold. So the geological potential in the country is excellent. Again, we've operated and explored there for 10 years. We think this is a fantastic jurisdiction to operate. Very good mining legislation. We've had uh, excellent people working with us on the exploration team in country. And uh, because we've been there 10 years, we understand that mining legislation. We understand the CSR work. We understand working with communities is so important and stakeholders is so important. And uh, I believe uh, B2 Gold uh, recognized that as uh, people with experience, but also a team of professionals with a track record that have created wealth for shareholders over the, pa over the past number of years. So our last company was called New Market Gold. And New Market Gold, we acquired three producing gold mines in Australia. We saw opportunity from an exploration standpoint. Geological potential was vast and we saw opportunity to optimize some of those mines. Over the course of 14 months at Newmarket Gold, we did that. We discovered a very high grade underground gold mine called Fosterville, which has become a flagship for Kirkland Lake Gold, a $12 billion company now. And we see similar opportunities now. Actually, we believe that we're starting from a better place than we did initially with Newmarket Gold. We're starting from a place of of great resources and reserves at El Iman, one of the gold mines we're acquiring and partnering with B2 Gold. And La Libertad has numerous exploration targets and we're going to focus on those. We're going to spend a, a, quite a significant amount of exploration dollars on some of those near mine targets. We just think we've got an incredible opportunity. B2 Gold, uh, one member is joining the board. They'll be joining our advisory board. They'll, they will be our largest shareholder. And B2 Gold has done such a tremendous, tremendous job in country uh, with their CSR work, with their community work, um, and we want to follow in, in their footsteps. And I believe that we have the team, the experience in country, and now that we've just completed uh, over a $100 million equity raise to pay part uh, of the transaction to B2 Gold in cash, we'll be left with a significant treasury to be able to explore uh, and look at ways to optimize the mines and align people and integrate over the next coming months. So it's a very exciting opportunity and I think it's a similar situation to New Market where we start from a very small market capitalization. Uh, we, emit, we acquire the immediate gold production and cash flow and that allow us to really significantly grow and use these assets as a platform to then look for future growth opportunities not only in the country but outside of the country as well to expand to hopefully and patiently become a mid-tier gold producer. Very exciting. There's lots to unpack there. One question is your financing. You raised just over $100 million in a market that has not been easy for many companies to raise money. How were you able to do it? It's a very good question and when we launched the deal and negotiated the deal with B2 Gold for US $100 million for these two producing assets, a development stage asset of gold and, and some exploration concessions, uh, I think I believe the gold price was trading a little around uh, under $1,300 an ounce. And we had the fortunate uh, opportunity with us as we were marketing this deal that, that the gold price did actually increase uh, over the, the last couple of months. So we had that going in our favor. But to your point, Charlotte, yes, absolutely. It's been a very challenging environment over the last couple of years. Um, numerous funds have had significant redemptions. Um, numerous exploration, development, and production companies have had a very challenging time raising capital. And, have, and a lot have resorted to challenging forms of debt 
challenging royalties to just advance their projects. But I think really with our $100 million capital raise, um, we believe it speaks to our view of the assets. We believe that a significant portion of the capital raise was really based on the quality of our team, was based on uh, the track record where we've identified opportunities uh, and opportunities where we believe that we can add significant value, whether it be the, through the drill bit, optimization of assets, or growth uh, with a company. So our view is, is slightly different. Ourselves, board and management, put over six and a half million dollars into the capital raise. So when, when investors see that, they see a really truly aligned management and board. When investors see that, they, I believe they recognize that management and board um, run the company like a shareholder. And we want to see shareholder returns, uh, share price increases. So I think that's very critical. And it was a difficult environment, especially over the summer. It was a challenging environment, but we continued and persevered and had some great significant uh, institutional orders that came in. Uh, one 19.9% shareholder on a pro forma basis that was a, a new market gold shareholder and knows the team, knows our track record. Uh, so it, uh, it was great to have it oversubscribed and, and we just closed that and so we're heading towards closing the transaction with B2 Gold uh, for October 15th and then we'll be up and trading again under the symbol CXB probably around October 21st or 22nd we'll be graduating to the main TSX exchange as well so very significant uh, transformational acquisition and uh, very significant capital raise where I think as you said Charlotte it's been challenging but I think it really does speak to the exploration potential it speaks to the the valuation that we priced this at and it speaks to the track record of the team you were speaking also about your decade of experience working in Nicaragua as an exploration company. Not every exploration company wants to move into producing. You, you spoke a little bit about why you did, but can you expand on that? Well, absolutely. And, um, you know, this business is challenging. It's not only uh, has a cyclical commodity environment, where you know sometimes the the price of your underlying producing commodity is as low sometimes it's high uh, mining is challenging exploration is even more challenging so um, going from an exploration company through development through all the way to construction and building and permitting and mine it's incredibly challenging and it can take decades with this opportunity um, very similar to new market gold we had an opportunity to acquire producing assets. And for us that's important because we believe uh, we can add a lot of value with our focused team to potentially optimize these mines. Uh, we see opportunity from our due diligence where the grades will be increasing. Uh, we think the costs will be decreasing. And the exploration potential around the mines looks fantastic to us. And uh, uh, we're, we're reviewing now, but it looks like we'll likely do somewhere between 35 and 45,000 meters of drilling, which, which I think is very significant for these assets. I, I, I believe that um, you know, it's this renewed interest in country, this renewed interest at these assets, uh, a very focused team. And again, this is a great win-win scenario for Caliber Mining and for B2 Gold. B2 Gold will be our largest shareholder. And uh, I think that uh, based on our track record and what we see there, we can add a lot of value in those shares for B2 Gold. And yes, we've operated there for 10 years. Uh, B2 Gold has operated for 10 years. We understand the mining legislation. Um, we, we truly understand and, and have seen and follow what B2 Gold has, has been doing. A great legacy they've, uh, they, they've presented. We will follow that legacy. Uh, we know these are important assets to B2 Gold they spawned B2 Gold. And, uh, and I think that's why there's such a win-win uh, opportunity here, being that B2 will be our biggest shareholder, um, being that they have that track record in country, as does Caliber Mining. So it's exciting to have not only the Barozzi concessions in the north of the country with over two and a half million ounces of inferred resources, a joint venture with IM Gold, and some excellent, excellent exploration potential up there, it's also great to now transform our company, Caliber, into a gold producer with a significant exploration portfolio, not only around the mines, but in the country. So uh, I think that uh, 
I think the opportunity for us is vast. I think uh, we'll, we'll do a good job of executing and integrating with our executive team, the team on the ground. And I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's an exciting part of, of our, our team is that we have a, a number of ex-Newmont executives that have joined us, a number of ex-Newmarket Gold executives that have joined us. And we think this is a, a fantastic starting platform and an opportunity to really add value for our shareholders and renew the excitement uh, for these assets in Nicaragua. What are the immediate next steps investors should look for, either at the new assets or at your existing ones that you had before? Great question. And uh, although we haven't closed the transaction, we've closed uh, mm -hmm. just a little over $100 million of equity. Um, that goes into something called a subscription receipt or escrow. So it's escrowed until we close the transaction, which is anticipated for the 15th of October. Once we complete the deal, uh, we're reviewing assets now. Again, I think the, uh, the benefit we have as, as uh, Caliber is almost getting a bit of a tailwind on these assets. B2 Gold have spent a significant amount of money on these assets, and importantly, this year. They have um, just completed a tailings lift at La Libertad. They've just completed pre-stripping uh, at El Iman. So we see at El Iman grade increasing and transitioning from an underground ore body to an open pit ore body and higher grade. We see opportunities at La Libertad whereby the grade is going to be increasing into the mill because uh, B2 Gold just were awarded a permit to start mining something called the Havili Antenna Open Pit. And again, this, this really does speak to the pro-mining, the pro-business nature of the Nicaraguan government. They uh, have really endorsed this opportunity for caliber mining and the, the joining forces with B2 Gold. Um, so the opportunity in front of us is uh, we see higher grade going to the mill, both mills, both mines, uh, uh, likely lower costs. We'll be coming out with official guidance for 2020 uh, by the end of the year. But uh, a big part of our story is the exploration. So we'll be announcing exploration, historical exploration results. We'll be announcing at each mine. We'll be announcing budgets and plans and targets for exploration on, on a go-forward basis for 2019 and 2020. So uh, there'll be news on, on all of our exploration initiatives, drilling, um, meters, budgets. Uh, so I think that's part of our exciting story is it's not just about production, but it's getting regular and consistent news flow. That's what investors can expect, not only on exploration, but our production, our production numbers. It's really uh, an opportunity to see what caliber mining our executives are able to do and identify new opportunities for expanding resources, near mill resources, and make new discoveries. So uh, I'm very excited about it, and there's going to be a lot of exploration for the company going forward. Perfect. I think that covers all my points, unless there's anything else you would want to leave investors with about the company or about the current gold price environment. Well, on the company, uh, on a pro forma basis, when we close the deal, we'll have roughly $180 million market capitalization. We'll have, I believe, about 35 to 40 million Canadian in cash. Uh, we'll have essentially no debt, a uh, small convertible debenture to B2 Gold. And so on, um, on an enterprise per ounce basis, we're trading at one-fifth what our peers would be trading at for this size of production. Uh, so we, we think that represents an incredible value opportunity for new shareholders. We think it represents an opportunity for the caliber mining team to, uh, to really see that opportunity and work towards re-rating our company. And uh, we'll be doing that through execution, through integration, through exploration and exploration success. And uh, I think it really does present an opportunity as a new gold producer with a team that has a tremendous track record, with a team that is aligned with shareholders by buying equity, significant equity in, in the first capital raise for this new transformational caliber mining and immediate gold producer. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm, um, I myself put a significant amount of capital into the raise and I'm very excited about this opportunity. With regards to the gold price, 
um, it's always challenging to understand and see, you know, where is gold going, uh, what is gold doing, and, and how is it doing that. You know, um, the macro landscape for gold and uh, uh, the macro landscape in general is it's choppy, it's volatile, um, geopolitical tensions, trade wars, uh, deficits. Um, you know, you look at the uh, Federal Reserve and the dovish nature of what they're talking about regarding interest rates, you know, potential slowdown of a global economy. Um, you can see that in the, the numbers, and, and that is an environment where gold can thrive. Do we know where gold is going? No. But when you, when you read and you listen to generalists that manage billions of dollars, for example, David Rosenberg, who recently said he would not be surprised to see gold go to $3,000 an ounce. Or Ray Dalio, uh, who says, you know, you have to have gold, a small percentage or a percentage of gold in your portfolio. So you've got these very uh, significant fund managers and macro economists talking about why gold. And there's many reasons that I've mentioned already, but they also see that in the numbers. Mm -hmm. I believe it was David Rosenberg that called the 2008 crash before it happened. And now he's saying everyone should have a portion of their portfolios, whether it be a gold equity, a gold ETF, uh, or physical gold in their portfolios. So you start to hear that narrative over and over by smart people that have created wealth for people over their lifetime that really are generalists, but are now saying now's the time to have exposure to gold. And so that's exciting. So your underlying commodity that you produce, you're not expecting the gold price to go up. You're running a business, ensuring that you have uh, excellent top line revenue and profitability, making sure you're, you're adding cash to the balance sheet and in the, in the current gold price environment, not expecting the gold price to go up. And if the gold price goes up, that's just so much more beneficial for our shareholders, for ourselves to add cash and then focus on the capital allocation as, as to where that should go to add more value for our shareholders. So it is an exciting time in the gold space. I think it's a very exciting time for Caliber Mining becoming an immediate gold producer, having a focused team with uh, really no debt and a good treasury over $40 million to be able to allocate that to exploration and optimization and create a great financial product that uh, will work towards getting into ETFs and indexes. I think that's a very important part of a business nowadays because there's so many algorithms and machine traded products. Caliber Mining will work towards getting into the GDXJ. There's minimum requir requirements to do that, but in doing so, I think that will help us re rate the company. And I think there's a very clear path for us to be able to get there. So, excited overall about the company, uh, and I'm, I'm enthused about where, where gold is trading at now let alone where it could go in the future. So thank you. Thank you so much for the time. That was great. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Ryan King with Caliber Mining.